Welcome back to the shop everybody. Recently I made a heart-shaped box and I've had a couple of viewers ask how I did it. Now, I'm gonna do my best in this video to give you a step-by-step -step rundown of how to produce that box. So let's open up Carbco with a new model. Now we're gonna start with a 12 inch by 12 inch work surface. It really doesn't matter how big you make your work surface it just gives you enough area to put your model on. We're going to use the bottom left corner for the origin. Again, that's why the size of this surface really doesn't matter as long as it's big enough to support the size of the project that you're going to put on it. So let's hit OK and we'll begin. Now, we don't really need to do this in the 3D version, so you can switch to a 2D vision here or view there if I can learn how to speak and <laughs> we'll go right up here to the vector files and we'll do the heart shape box just as I did it now here where we have this box we'll start with typing in the word heart we only need the first letter and it gives us the heart that I used right here drag that over into your model and as you can see it pops that heart in at 12 by 12 we don't want that big so go over here make sure the aspect ratio lock is on which it is and we're gonna make the heart four inches scroll down hit apply now you have the size of the heart that we use now we no longer need this open over here so let's close this out get it out of the way after you have the heart created, the first thing you're going to want to do is move it from the center of the work surface to this corner down here. And in order to do that, we look for the crosshairs and we can left click and drag it down. That's one way. Another way is to simply use the down arrows on your keyboard, clicking until you get it where you'd like it. Now, as you can see here, I've got the grid on so I can tell the spaces from the surface edges of my work surface. So they're set up at one half an inch. If I bring this heart down to this bottom row of dots, I'll be a half an inch off the bottom of the material. Same thing on this side, I'll be a half an inch off the left. And that will be plenty close enough to not waste material, but it will get me in the left corner of my stock. The reason for that is this piece is 12 inches by 12 inches. You're working with a four inch square, basically, cutout. You don't want to waste all this material. Again, this is just a work surface in order to put your project on. So once you have this here, then you can begin doing the next steps. Let's go to the arrow, click off of it. There's our heart. Select the inner, I don't know what you'd call that, the inner shape of the heart. And we're going to go to offset. We need to create the little lip that holds the top of the box on right here. So the offset distance would be, that I used, was 3 30 seconds of an inch. Now in order to get that figure, I simply divided 3 by 32 and it gives us this number right here 0 0.09375 we want it to offset outward because we don't want to reduce the inside of the space it'll be small enough as it is with a little four inch heart so we definitely want to go to the outside scroll down hit offset you don't necessarily have to scroll down I just like to confirm that I haven't got anything selected here that shouldn't be selected. Hit offset and there you can see we now have this space right here which is going to create the lip to hold the lid on when we get to that point. I'm going to click off of that. Now when I produced this heart the first time on the same piece of material I produced the lid and the heart. I don't recommend doing that because you then have to make the lid the same wood that you made 
the base out of. It would be nice to be able to change it to two different species of wood to get different effects. So we'll start with just the box portion here and we'll start to do some tool paths. Now I work from the inside of the object that I'm making to the outside with my tool paths. So in order to get the tool paths, we don't need this open any longer, so let's click on the arrow. You could also have exited out on the top corner. So let's click on the tool paths and this will open up here. What we need is an area clearance. We're going to clear this area. This will be the actual box portion. All right, so let's choose a tool. We'll use a quarter inch flat end mill for this. Because we're using cherry wood, I would adjust the feed rate accordingly. Now, if you're using pine, you probably could get away with 100 feet 100 feet, 100 inches per minute. You use 100 feet per minute, you're rolling. So I would probably drop this back to 50. We don't want the movement back and forth in this case. We want an offset movement, so we change that. Our machine safe Z is 0.25 inches. That's correct. I have a video on the importance of that. You can look that video up. It's a video of the machine crashing into your project. Let's set up the material thickness. Now obviously this is a box so we need it to be rather thick. I chose an inch and a half. So we now have the thickness. And let's name the toolpath. I would just use um, something that works for you. And we'll use heart box inside. Calculate, and you can see our toolpath. Let's zoom in here a little so you can get a better look. It's going to clear everything on the inside line out. The next thing we need to create is the lip that holds the box on. Now you can go over here to this side and turn off the vectors for the area clearance if that helps by clicking on these buttons over here. You turn them on and off. These two lines right here designate or indicate where the lip will be. We don't need the inside line highlighted. We just need to highlight this one here. We're going to need a profiling toolpath. We're going to want to go along the outside of this. None of this stuff needs to be entered in here. The start depth is obviously zero, but the finish depth is very important. You don't want to drop down an inch and a half. It will cut the heart clean off and you'll have no lip here. Your finish depth should be an eighth of an inch. Now for those of you that are like me and can't do math, I have the calculator right here. An eighth of an inch would be one divided by eight gives us 0.125. That number goes in here, 0.125 which will give us an eighth inch tall lip right here that is three thirty seconds of an inch wide. Continue down we need to select a tool we'll stay with the eighth inch end mill so we don't have to do tool changes. We'll continue we don't need any bridges we don't need any tabs all we need to do is put a name on it. Let's do heart box lip calculate and it doesn't look like it's done much but it has it's gonna run around the outside edge cutting off that much of the box to create this lip all right let's shut those off so we can see now the final step here is to cut this heart out so again we need a contour toolpath we need the very outside line this time Again, outside, starting at zero. Now this time, we do want the tool to go down an inch and a half and cut this off. So that's correct. 
but stay with the same quarter inch end mill. And I do want a couple of bridges on this one and I'm going to add them manually by clicking here. I also have a video on this. Let's slide this over out of the way just a touch. Select zero there. I want to be able to count how many I want put in. I don't want the machine to do it. Click add. Move this back out of the way. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to put a tab randomly where I think would be a good spot. One there, one there, and we'll name this toolpath. We'll call it Heartbox Cutoff. Again, there's no real reason for any particular name. I just try to be specific so when I'm looking for them, I know what I'm looking at. Calculate. We should be good to go. Let's close this out. Click on tool paths. Let's do a simulation just to see what we get. And here you can see we have a heart cut out. Push shift, left click to turn it to confirm that we do have what we're looking for. And I see a problem. I see that the center has not cut out. Now this mistake is a fortunate one because it allows me to prove my point about the significance of being specific with your toolpath names. I know what's wrong here and because I've named these names specifically I know it's the Heartbox toolpath, the inside Heartbox, that's the problem. So we'll double click on that and what I did was right here I missed this box. We have to input a finish depth there or it will not cut. Now the original material is an inch and a half thick so I used arbitrarily one inch here. So it leaves me one half of an inch on the bottom. We'll go down and we will calculate once more. Close this out. Let's simulate the toolpath one more time. And as you can now see, we have a box. It was a fortunate mistake. That way I could show you the value of running a simulation before you cut this out. We'll come back over here. Click on toolpaths. We have to save them. So save the toolpaths. Everything is correct up here. Remember to change the name. I've said this before. Change the name or it will mess up the previous file. You'll lose it. So we're going to put HB in here. I'm not going to save this for any particular reason other than to show you all how to do this. Hit save. And as just a habit, I'll hit save again. Yes, I want to override it. Close this out. And we now have the box itself, the box bottom. So now if I was going to do the lid, I would open up a new model, 12 by 12, same size, do the same process and bring it down here into this corner. But let's bring it right here and we'll work on this surface right here. So we'll go back up, open up the vectors, choose the heart again, pull it in, you can click on it and it'll put it in there as well. Close this out. We know the box is four inches. So we change that to four. Hit apply again. And now we can begin working on our lid. Now for the sake of confusion or to eliminate confusion, I'm going to grab this heart and just slide it over here out of the way, away from this one so that you're, you can see it easier. We'll zoom in. Get the arrow to close it out. We need to make a contoured toolpath here. I take that back. We need to take and make a pocket. But we need to make this larger by 332 seconds 
or it won't go over top of the lip created on this one. So we'll go to offset. We need 330 seconds. It's already loaded. The machine remembered it. The computer program remembered it. Offset. There's our lip again. But in this case, we don't want the lip there. So we'll click the center line and delete it. Now we have our lid that will fit over the lip. Now we'll go back in and click this center line. We need to create a recess in the lid. We don't want this open, we want tool paths. Now if this was another new piece or another new project, you wouldn't have these tool paths in here obviously. So we're going to go down and we're going to hit an area clearance. We want to clear the center of this lid. Start depth zero, finish depth, and here's where we made the mistake on the box itself. We won't make it here. Now the total depth of this lid is going to be three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to take out a half an inch out of the center, which will leave me a top that's a quarter of an inch thick. So we'll take out 0.5. The beauty of this whole thing is that we can use the quarter inch end mill through this entire project. It's been added. Let's slow down the speed. We don't want to go back and forth again. We want offset. Now in this case the material is not going to be an inch and a half. It's going to be three quarters of an inch. We need to set that up. Three quarters of an inch. 0.75. Hit OK. Now we'll call this uh, box lid, uh, let's say center, and calculate, tool path is there, we'll shut them off for confusion sake. And now you simply have to cut the lid loose, so you click the outside line, tool paths again. We want a profile tool path. Again, along the outside edge. Starting depth zero, finish depth 75, 0.75 or three quarter because that's the thickness of the material and obviously we want to cut this loose. Back to our one quarter inch end mill again. You can click on it a second time and reduce the speed. Again, we want to add some bridges. I want to add them manually. Again, I want to choose how many. I don't want four. We've made all of these adjustments prior to doing this. And if you don't know how to make those adjustments, you can look at my video that's um, about adding bridges or tabs. Hit add. Let's move this back over. And again, we're just going to put these in randomly where I think necessary to hold the lid in place while it's cut out. We'll name this one. Lid cut off. Calculate. Close this out. And let's simulate these tool paths. So as you can see, we now have a lid. Cut off, tab there, tab there. Let's zoom in. And you can see that the lid is a half an inch deep. So I hope you got something out of this video. I hope it helped you in some way. I hope you learned something. Please give me a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Share the video. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one.